Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Chris Goodwin. I'm a structural engineer. Uh, I've been a structural engineer for about um, four and a half years, something like that. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you today uh, mostly about what it is to be a structural engineer and how to get there. Uh, and then also I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the institution of structural engineers as well. I think something just from Alan's lecture and picking up on some of the titles of the other presentations, it's funny how um, you see common threads, whether it's the nuclear industry getting mentioned or health and safety or aeroplanes. And I think that's what makes engineering really interesting is that somehow in some way they're all sort of interlinked and all, all to do with each other. And, and that's what makes it such an interesting profession. Um, so structural engineers, um, whether it's a multi-story tower block or it's an airport or a bridge or it's just someone's house extension or loft conversion, a structural engineer will be involved in that. So we construct, design, repair, conserve buildings and structures and uh, we work alongside architects and other types of engineers, building services engineers, mechanical engineers. Um, and then that's sort of the, the gist of what, what we're all about. So day to day, um, first of all, we analyze. So whether it's gravity or earthquakes or the forces from wind, uh, we sort of see how the forces are resisted and how they are applied in any given structure. And then what we also do is uh, design materials. So whether that's figuring out how much reinforcement needs to go in a concrete foundation, uh, the, si the size of a steel column or the depth of a timber beam, uh, that's the kind of design that we do um, to certain codes and standards. And another important bit of what we do is coordinating. Uh, so the structure of a building is just the skeleton and there are other things that are going on. There's the doors, there's openings for services, there's the heating and the lighting, um, all sorts of things that other disciplines are specialist in. And we have to coordinate those things so that structures can be usable and look good and things like that. And what we also do then is we have to produce information so that a contractor can come along and actually build the structure. So we do what's called design. So we produce sets of drawings and 3D models and then that gets given over to a contractor. The contractor comes along and they actually erect and build the structure. And that's one of the fun bits because you get to go out on site and wear boots. So. Uh, just a little bit about sort of my journey of becoming a structural engineer because I sort of um, weaved through my education and ended up kind of being spat out the other end as a structural engineer. So at school I sort of took your usual mix of subjects. Uh, I particularly enjoyed maths and physics. There was something about physics that was sort of I could sort of understand and see in terms of the other sciences like biology and chemistry didn't do so much for me but physics I remember doing a, an experiment that was something to do with tying weights to the ends of bits of copper wire and the copper wire would sort of stretch and go back, sort of stress and strain. And I just found that interesting because so, I could see and visualise it. So then at college I took uh, maths, physics and business and then kind of figured out that I think engineering is probably for me because it seems like a good mix of those things. But I didn't have any, like none of my parents were engineers or anything like that so I, I didn't really know much about engineering. So when I went to uni uh, I took a general engineering degree. So the way that the Warwick degree is structured is that in the first couple of years you tend to do a mixture of all different subjects. So I've just listed some of them there. I did electrical, manufacturing, um, like a, a real mix of everything. And sort of just by process of elimination kind of came to which ones I liked and didn't like. Uh, so say with electrical engineering, like I hated it. <laughs> like, I mean, that's, that's, that's no disrespect to electrical engineers or anything, but just, it just wasn't for me at all. Um, I think I just found it too hard. Um, but then in my second year, um, I did a module that was called Forensic Engineering. And basically what that was, is similar to Alan's lecture, I guess, um, it was studying a series of engineering failures and disasters. And it was just utterly fascinating. Um, I don't know what it was, just something about it drew me in. Um, so I remember doing a uh, piece of coursework on the collapse of the Westgate Bridge in Australia, which is where they sort of started erecting this bridge. And as the two bits came together, they were something like, I don't know, 100 mil off the two sides. So what they decided to do was put a load of blocks of weight on this side to bring them together and then bolted them together. And then once they took the weights off, it panged and the whole thing collapsed. Um, so, you know, it's learning things like that are just fascinating. Again, it's the, it's the human error that comes into these things. And uh, some of the uh, recommended reading for uh, that course was that book, Why Buildings Fall Down. 
which is where the title of my presentation came from. Um, and it was just a really, really good read. Uh, if you're thinking maybe about doing structural engineering, um, give that book a go. Uh, I'm sure if you Googled it with .pdf on the end, you'd find a suitably free version. Um, but yeah, just a really, really good read, really sort of in layman's terms, not particularly uh, technical. There are some technical bits in it to explain certain things of what's going on. But that's something I certainly recommend if you're thinking about it. Um, so yeah, um, after that lecture, I decided to um, go into the civil stream of the engineering degree. So in my final two years, I uh, just did solely civil engineering. So the subjects that I took there over the two years, that's a sort of mix of what you'd expect to find on any given civil engineering degree. And that sort of puts you in good stead to being a structural engineer, because structural engineering makes, a good, makes up a good deal of a civil engineering degree. Um, so I just took some, uh, some sort of pictures from some of my favorite textbooks. And yes, I have favorite textbooks, um, just, to, just to show you the kind of things that you deal with. So it's steel design, concrete design, things I've already mentioned, uh, geotechnics, which is a, a very difficult subject because it's, it's all about what happens with um, the, sort of the soil and rocks that you build structures on and foundations. It's a very difficult topic. So after, uh, after going through uni, I got a graduate job with ACOM which is a huge multinational um, interdisciplinary engineering firm. And it was actually in the nuclear industry, which again, is one of those things that seems to be running through all these presentations is sort of the nuclear industry and things like that. So I just Googled um, a picture of Selfield because that was where we did all the work at ACOM in Warrington. Um, and that sort of shows you a, a good example of sort of all the things that are going on. So you've got the, the blue bit there in the middle, that's a, a big concrete storage facility that's got lots of water and nuclear nasties in it. There's ladders, there's cranes on the right there, there's um, platforms, there's all sorts of things going on. <coughs> so the kind of stuff that a structural engineer will do in that environment is sort of designing the new platforms, um, checking the existing structures and things like that. So it's a really interesting place to be. Um, I spent about 18 months there, but um, I think because uh, the sort of the safety aspect of it is so critical, the pace is a little bit slow. Um, and as a young engineer, I just felt like I wasn't getting the sort of breadth of experience that I wanted. Um, so after that, I went to BDP in Manchester, um, which is a much more sort of commercially orientated uh, company. It's a multidisciplinary play, architect practice, um, employs all sorts of disciplines. And more importantly, the, the, the pace was a lot faster and I was, I was sort of exposed to a lot of different projects and a lot of different things and a lot of different structures, uh, which sort of suited me better and made me grow a lot. So the first project that I was involved with uh, was not very far from where my old ACOM office was, which is kind of ironic. Um, so all I did was, th these are uh, three big warehouses, and I designed the foundations for them. Uh, the superstructure was being designed by someone else, but I came along and I did the, uh, the pad foundations um, for all of these three buildings. And it's just one of the things that engineers do that isn't often that sort of lauded, because it's all on the ground and you can't see it but it takes its own level of sort of expertise in engineering to be able to make sure a foundation solution is you know, workable and easy to build. And then this project, um, so projects sort of work in stages. So it will go from very early concept design and it will get worked through right through to construction. And I was involved in this project sort of in the middle sort of detailed design stage. So I'm from Stockport, so this was a good project to uh, be involved in because it's a new, it's called the Red Rock and it's a new sort of uh, car park and cinema complex that's recently opened. Now I did uh, some of the calculations on this because it had gone from concept, so they've sort of decided how they were going to build it, what they were going to build it off, and I had to do some sort of um, just more detailed calculations to figure out how it was going to work. So uh, one of the interesting bits that I like doing was the central support uh, on the right there that you can see. That has to, that, that's on a main bus route, so it has to be able to withstand a bus smashing into the supports and not collapsing. So I had to sort of delve into the new codes and figure out what that force should be and how the building was going to resist it. And then that's my model on the bottom right there, which is something that we, we do um, quite a lot is, um, yes, we'll analyze things by hand and do hand calculations, but we'll also put things in software and use the software to, um, to figure out what the forces are. And this is sort of one of my favorite projects because uh, it recently won an IEEE award uh, but I was involved right from the very, very start of this project all the way through uh, to construction and completion. And it's called Box Park Croydon. And it's a uh, kind of mixture of, there's lots of little street food venues and um, there's a 
Uh, they have events and gigs there all the time. Uh, there's lots of food and things like that. But the twist is, uh, the whole building, apart from the roof, is made of shipping containers. And that's not a usual uh, structural material. So a shipping container, um, that's, I sort of did that sketch to demonstrate uh, how it's all sort of made up. So you might recognize them from like freight trains and lorries and things on the motorway. Um, so we have to sort of strip it apart and figure out exactly what it's made of. Uh, and then the, the way that they're stacked there, that's normally not how they're stacked. When you see them in big yards or sort of by the train tracks and things like that, they're all just stacked sort of straight on top of each other. Whereas here we were sort of twisting them and putting them in places that they wouldn't normally go. So we had to sort of uh, modify them quite significantly. So whether that was sort of openings for services to go through or uh, bigger door openings so that you could have big open spaces. And it doesn't sound like a lot. I think they're, um, I think they're about eight feet wide. And it doesn't sound like a lot for a sort of a restaurant or a takeaway or something, but it works quite well because you get a lot in a very small space and you can just kind of go in, get some chicken wings, get a beer. Um, and it makes for quite a good kind of dynamic little environment. And then that's something else that I just wanted to mention is um, uh, sketching as engineers. Um, it's quite an important thing that we do. Um, and it's quite, uh, like architects seem to like it when we do because we're not seen, engineers aren't seen as the sort of uh, ones that can just freehand sketch the architects and only seen as that sort of thing. Um, but it's, it's fun to sort of draw things out and sketch things out because the earlier, I mean, I did this, um, I did this because we needed a way to sort of record what the philosophy of the structure was. Um, so it's good for the sort of earlier stages where you don't really want to start drawing uh, really complex drawings when you haven't figured out exactly what you're doing yet. So on the left there, that's just some of the sketches I did for the, the sort of the container stacks and the way they were all stacked together. And then on the right and at the top, you can sort of see uh, that's some of the drawings I did for the, uh, the steel canopy roof, which was over the top of the whole thing. <coughs> And then that's it when it was completed. So on the right there, uh, on the left there, that's everyone sort of having lunch. And then on the right, that's everyone getting drunk watching the football. Uh, so it's a, it's a really good like, space. I mean, I went there uh, during the summer. It's, it's a really nice space. Um, it's, it's got, I mean, there was the next picture as well. The next picture probably is during uh, one of the opening nights where they had a big gig. I think it was Stormzy. Um, so it was quite sort of loud. And well, uh, our architect director was there uh, for the opening night. And he said that the roof was literally shaking and sort of asked me if we were sure that it wasn't going to fall down, <laughs> uh, which it didn't. <laughs> okay, so that's that project. Uh, another one, this one doesn't look quite as sort of all singing and all dancing. Uh, the structure is only like a little one-story thing. It's uh, an extension to a um, cancer treatment facility at Wolverhampton Hospital. And that was a really, really interesting thing to be involved with because even though it doesn't look like much from the outside, uh, behind that brick facade is a great big concrete bunker because in the middle of it, they have to have, uh, that's a, a linear accelerator. Uh, so because it zips around radiation and things like that, it has to have really thick, thick concrete walls to make sure that the radiation doesn't get out. So I had to do some very complex calculations to sort of figure out how much reinforcement needed to go in those really thick walls to make sure they didn't crack too much. So that was a really, really cool thing to be involved with just because it was you know, something, so, um, something so interesting. And this is a project I've been recently involved with um, that's nearing completion now. Um, and that's the, the picture of the existing site on the left there. Uh, it's a new engineering building for Uclan University. And that's the, at the top there, that's the, the architect's sort of render. So that's what they wanted, wanted it to look like in the end. And again, that's one of my models on the bottom right there, one of my analysis models that I used to uh, do the design. Which we can, the software can do certain elements of the design for you, but you always need to be doing hand calculations and things like that to, to back up what it says to make sure it's not being silly. Um, we needed quite a lot of extensive groundworks on this site because uh, there was quite a deep layer of uh, just made ground, so it was just all bits of brick and rock and things like that, nothing, nothing substantial. So there's a, um, the piling rig is over there on the, the big red thing, sending down piles to reach down to the, the, the better ground. Uh, there was a big retaining wall. Uh, there's some sheet power retaining wall there. So again, that's another another bit about foundations and, and how we get involved. And this, so when you stabilize a building to make sure it doesn't fall down when the wind is blowing, uh, one way of doing that is having concrete cores. And that's one of the concrete cores. Now the rebar in there was uh, 60 mil diameter. So it was, it was absolutely colossal. Like they had to sort of hike these things in with cranes and stuff. Um, so walking around on site, it was good to sort of you know, see what you've designed coming to coming to fruition. It's it's a really rewarding part of the job. 
And then I think the picture on the left, I'm not sure when that was taken, but the one on the right was just before Christmas. Uh, so that's the steel frame going up and uh, some of the floors have started to go in as well. And it's been good to sort of where Box Park was sort of a um, kind of a weird, quirky structure. This is more of a sort of conventional uh, steel frame with concrete walls. So it's been good to see that project from, from start to finish as well. Um, and sort of working with the contractor as well, that's been a really important part of it, is sort of working with the people who are actually building it is a good part of sort of seeing the real world implications. I mean, I'll, I'll go and do my analysis, I'll do my drawings and stuff, but then, it, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be sat in the hands of someone who's not necessarily as educated me or as, you know, someone who's got way more experience than me. And they'll go, hmm, why are they doing that like that? Hmm, I don't think so. Um, so it's a, good, it's a good sort of process to be involved with. Yeah, so that's a little bit about sort of my career and what I've done. Uh, and now I'll just talk a little bit about the Institution of Structural Engineers. Um, it's a globally recognized um, institution with lots of members. I'm sure you've heard about the IC and, and, and other, mem other institutions today. And a big deal of the, um, uh, a good deal of the membership is, is young members. And the thing about um, being professionally qualified uh, with the ISTRUCT is that you can uh, sort of go and work wherever you want to work, as, as we've heard from earlier. Um, you know, it's, 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 it acts as a passport to go wherever you want and go around the world and engineer wherever you want. And then just even, even though we've been talking about sort of chartered membership and things like that, I think it all starts with becoming a student member. So if you're thinking about becoming a structural engineer or just want to get involved or whatever, um, there is free student membership. So as soon as you're on your degree, uh, if you end up going that way, then sign up for free membership. Because once you do, you get a bunch of different benefits. Um, on the right there, I just took the most late, latest copy of the Structural Engineer, which is a magazine that goes out every month, so you'll get free copies of that. But also, um, you can get involved with, the, the ISTRUCT has a local uh, young members committee, and they put on events all the time uh, that you can get involved with. So a pub quiz, and there's a five-a-side as well. Uh, there's all sorts of things, uh, and there's been a sketching workshop the other week. That, that looked really good. So yeah, just think about uh, membership if you, if you do choose to go down the Structural Engineering route. And yeah, I think that's about it from me. Uh, I hope that's been useful. Um, so yeah, any questions? <laughs>